guys? Welcome to Dino Demos. I'm Rod. I'm Lego, and today we're going to talk about 10 things that you should consider bringing when going on a motorcycle road trip. If you guys like the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. All right, guys, so we just wanted to do, uh, give a shout out to Rebel Reaper. So when we got home, uh, we had this box waiting for us. And you know, he always sends out a personal note. So really cool dude. Uh, thank you, Matt. So these are uh, some of the gloves that he sent us. You know, I think these are, his, uh, these are the new version and I think these were the older ones. Uh, but these are completely touchscreen compatible and Rod actually rocked these gloves for 2,100 miles and uh, touchscreen compatible, you know, and they didn't rip or anything. So I'm gonna say these are, these are a good product if you're looking for gloves. Um, they definitely held the test of time. And uh, it sent us out a bunch of stickers. So we'll probably throw some of those on our bike. We got a patch, really cool. Um, he sent out uh, a lapel pin, which that's awesome. I probably wanna put that on my cut. So in addition to the stuff that he sent us, I actually rocked his uh, cut the entire time I was out there uh, for that 2,100 miles, you know, not a rip, not a tear. I didn't even wash this thing once and I rode in the rain. Um, don't recommend doing that. Probably didn't smell the best, but whatever. Uh, he also sent us out a banner. So this is going up in the shop, you know, the Dyna Demo shop. And then he also sent us out some tees. Um, so I can't wait to wear those. Uh, he sent us out a black one for Rod and then uh, I got a white one. All right, guys, so if you're interested in any of this Rebel Reaper gear, um, then hit him up on his IG or his website. Uh, we can tell you firsthand his riding gear is awesome. Like we said earlier, Lego wore that cut 2,100 miles. I rock the gloves. They're touchscreen compatible, no rips. Uh, they worked awesome. So I, I highly recommend his gear, but if you're just, like I said, interested in any of his swag stuff, like his T-shirts or like his hats or anything, uh, check those out too. He's got really cool designs and he just redid his logo, which is pretty awesome. So again, if you're interested in Rebel Reaper, check out his website or his IG. And thanks again, Matt from Rebel Reaper. All right, guys. So we're going to go over the 10 things that we thought were uh, most useful to us uh, and that everybody should consider bringing on their motorcycle trip. We just got back from a 2100 mile trip. If you tune into our Instagram, you see, uh, you could see all the pictures on our story and all our posts. But uh, the first thing that we think everybody needs is a bag. Oh, I wanna go back one second. We're not gonna go over like hygiene and uh, clothes because obviously everybody's gonna take a toothbrush or a razor deodorant and as much clothes as they need for however long they're gonna be gone. All right, so me and Lego packed all that stuff. That's a no brainer, everybody should take that stuff. But the first thing on our list is a bag. All right, I have the Biltwell Xfil 80, all right, and Another thing you should consider is like a luggage rack or a sissy bar because me and Lego um, found that the sissy bar was extremely useful uh, to strap in our bags down. Like I said, this is the Biltwell Xfil 80. Lego had the uh, military issue duffel bag, AKA the sea bag, and it pretty much fit 90% of all the stuff we took. All right guys, so number two on the list is tools. All right, me and Lego, obviously we have the same bike, so we know what tools we needed. That's gonna depend on what kind of bike you have and uh, probably how long you're gonna be gone, I would say. But uh, if you wrench on your own bike or you do routine maintenance on your own bike, you should know like the common tools that you need to bring on your trip. Um, I mean, this is just an example of some stuff that we brought on our trip minus a few things we had some tools in here obviously but uh that's just an example of some things that you could bring common wrenches common sockets probably some pliers an adjustable wrench maybe some vice grips all right guys another thing with tools you uh, might want to consider is maybe like a leatherman like a multi-tool or a good knife um these are always you know having a knife probably in any situation is a, a really good thing to have with you. So you could add a knife or a multi-tool to uh, your tool list. All right guys, so third thing on the list, we're gonna say is rain gear. And rain gear is extremely important if you're on the East Coast. 
I recommend if you're going on a motorcycle trip, just spend the extra money and get a really good suit. So this suit was about $45. Um, and then what I did was I bought the cheap frog tog rain suit and I ripped the pants on these about three times. So I had to just, I ended up spending like just as much as Rod did on the actual rain suit. So um, just spend the extra money and get a good riding suit. Um, nobody wants to be riding around with wet feet. So what we did is we bought these booties that go over your boots or your riding shoes, whatever, and they keep your feet dry. Now these were a game changer. So Rod spent about $10 on Amazon to get these. And I'll put the link in the description for all this stuff. But um, I walked around in these and I wasn't just riding with them and I tore through these in like a day. So these were about 10 bucks. And then I'll show you what I used what I ended up getting was I went to Cycle Gear. These are uh, built well and are built. And uh, these things lasted the entire trip. And I walked around in these. They got a better sole on the bottom of these. I highly recommend these. These were about $25 from Cycle Gear. Um, all right, guys. So like I was talking about, rain gear to keep yourself dry and keep yourself warm. Um, to keep your bag dry. Now, Rod, he's got this sweet bag. And all you have to do is unzip the bottom and then your rain cover comes out and then your bag's not gonna get wet. But what I did was, you guys seen, I had that uh, sea bag. So all I did was I used a trash bag and every hotel that we stayed at or whatever, I would just be like, hey, could I get a trash bag? And then I covered it up. And uh, that's a good way if you don't wanna spend the extra money on a really nice bag, but uh, it worked out. Number four on our list is a first aid kit. All right guys, so another thing that we found, <laughs> we actually had to use this the first day, extremely important, was a first aid kit. All right, um, the first, or the second day actually, on the trip, I was cutting a zip tie, and like an idiot, I cut my finger. <laughs> and uh, we had a first aid kit and some uh, liquid skin, that's that super glue stuff that you can put on your skin, and I just, uh, put it on there, butterfly bandaged, and then taped it up, and now we're good to go. So I think that uh, this is a really good investment. You could go cheap and you could buy like a little, like, you know, dollar one, you could buy a $10 one, you could buy a $20 one, um, whatever, whatever you feel is necessary, but I think everybody should have at least some Band-Aids and some basic first aid stuff. All right, in addition, um, you know, you learn a lot of basic first aid things being in the military. We always carry a tourniquet with us, but if you don't have a tourniquet, you could use your belt as a tourniquet, um, just in case like there's some crazy in injury that you encounter and you gotta stop the bleeding ASAP. So uh, first aid kit and tourniquet, I feel like is a must on your motorcycle trip. All right guys, so number five on the list, we got some fluids and uh, so, I brought chain lube because I have a chain conversion done on my bike and we rode in the rain probably at least half the time. So whenever uh, we would pull over, you know, and we were done for the night, I would make sure to lube my chain. And of course I used Amsoil. Shout out to a diesel oil guy for hooking it up. This kept me on the road and my chain did not rust because I made sure to uh, spray it after it rained and stuff. So. Uh, another thing that is really important, we brought freaking oil. So whatever oil, oil you want to use, we, uh, we always use Amsoil. Um, but after a long road trip, you know, you might need to put some, some in your bike if your uh, bike's eating oil. So make sure that you take extra oil. We took a quart and we used more than half of it. All right. All right, guys. In addition, uh, if you're in a pinch, Super glue or JB Weld could be a game changer. So Rob over here, his uh, hinge pin fell out. And uh, what we had to do, he uh, just put some super glue on it. If we had JB Weld, we would have been able to JB Weld it. But um, that got us back on the road. So if you're in a pinch, uh, it's probably a good idea to have some super glue or maybe JB Weld. All right guys, so number six on our list is a battery pack or USB plug-in. All right, everybody knows what these are, little battery packs. You can buy them on Amazon, Walmart. You can get them at gas stations. Uh, they're pretty useful if you're in a pinch. Um, but Lego, if you come over here, me and Lego both ran these on this trip. It's a little battery tender USB plug-in. 
ran it up to our uh, ram mount so we could see where we're going and stuff uh actually ran a three foot cord just a regular iphone cord and it worked perfect uh, i just am using this long cord just to show you guys what it looks like i've seen guys run those up to their handlebars as well uh but however you want to do it it's extremely important to stay connected um that'll bring us into our next one number seven uh you know we didn't know where we were going we've never been on these roads so we we're using our GPS. If you don't have a GPS or you don't have a, uh, you know, if you're just hardcore and you can, you have a compass or uh, you can tell where you're going by the direction that the sun's facing or whatever, whatever the case may be, um, you need a map or GPS, all right? We used it on our phone. Uh, we probably could have used a map in a few places because when we were up at like 6,000 feet or deep in the cuts and some of those rides and some of those roads, uh, we lost service. So a map or a GPS or a compass, if you're really hardcore, is very important. Um, and that's the number seven thing that you should bring on your trip. All right, guys, number eight on the list is tape. Now, I got some plumber's tape, got electrical tape, and then uh, make sure you also probably bring duct tape, right? So one of the things that Rod and I did that probably wasn't the smartest because we were actually leak checking it on the road is we decided to uh, put the oil cooler on uh, before we even left. Now, that could have been, uh, you know, it could have been like a catastrophe because it could have just started leaking everywhere, but luckily it didn't. And uh, we, we used a lot of plumber's tape when we installed it. So it's a good idea to bring plumber's tape because, you know, you might just have a drain plug that starts leaking or something and you already have an O-ring on it, but it's so worn out that you need some plumber's tape. So that's always good to have. Uh, Another thing just good to have is electrical tape. You know, maybe you got a cut on your finger, you didn't bring a first aid kit, or you just need to tape something up. Uh, it's great to have. And then uh, if you're going on long trips, you know, maybe you got like an FXR and it's held together with nothing but like duct tape and zip ties, like you can't go wrong with that. So make sure you bring some duct tape too. And last but not least uh, for number eight is zip ties. Now zip ties, They'll get you through um, some trying times and also be careful when you're cutting these because you might cut your finger and then need that first aid kit. So uh, that's number eight on the list. All right guys, so the number nine thing on our list is a good headlight or flashlight, all right? So God forbid, you know, you break down at night or, you know, during times of low visibility and you need to see under your bike or you need to see something on your bike, all right, a headlight, a headlamp and a uh, flashlight is a really good thing to bring. All right guys, so the, the tenth and final thing on our list is bug spray or sunscreen, all right? If you're one of those guys that rides on the, on the highway or freeway with a half shell and you know, just some goggles on and you know, no face shield or a tank top, then you probably don't need to worry about number 10, but uh, I, like to put, I don't like to get burnt, all right, personally. Um, so I, I would say sunscreen. I bought these, these were like little, just little sleeves I put on so I didn't have to apply sunscreen because we we're on the road like all day. So I just bought those little sleeves, they're like $9 and they're UV protectant and when they get wet, they keep you cool. But uh, if you ride with short sleeves, you probably wanna put on some sunscreen if you're gonna be out there all day. Additionally, bug spray, um, if you're camping or at night, you know, um, when you're off your bike, you probably want to spray yourself so you don't get eaten up by mosquitoes and stuff. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for us here at Dyna Demos. Uh, I hope if you're planning a motorcycle trip, this helps you guys out or you're at least considering some of these things. Like we said at the beginning of the video, this is just what we thought um, was the most useful for us. Uh, if you're one of those hardcore guys and just want to take a buoy knife and like a quart of oil, then like awesome, more power to you. But uh, this is what we found most useful, like I said in the beginning. Again, I'm Rod. I'm Lego, and if you like the video, make sure you guys